hey guys welcome back to another video i hope you are all doing okay today i am going to be sorting out my nails these are absolutely disgusting if you had seen how grown out they were i mean this hand wasn't too bad but this hand was revolting um we're not even going to talk about that i've done a full soak off because i fancy changing my base today because i had everlasting love on for quite a while and obviously i do like like to create like content and stuff for my instagram and every set was just the same base with a different design and i was like mm, i need to switch it up so we are going to change the base today i'm actually doing my nails for my friend's wedding i am so excited it is sunday today and the wedding is on thursday so yeah i'm gonna do my uh, friend's wedding nails if you saw my start a builder gel journey with me video you will see um that i basically started her builder gel journey and that is for the bride whose wedding i'm going to on thursday um i have been popping some updates on that actually on my instagram and um, to let you know and let you see how i've been getting on with the nails and how they've been growing out um but yeah today i'm going to be doing mine i actually have a full day of wedding guests on tuesday so i'm hoping that i'm not going to wreck these nails we'll keep our fingers crossed but if i didn't do them today then i just wouldn't have had time to do them any other day um but yeah so we have soaked off the base and i'm going to be answering your questions because you guys know that i do like infill and tutorial videos and soak off and fresh application videos all the time and um, so i thought i'd switch this one up and rather than just filming my nails i would basically do them in this video but not a close-up but answering your questions so i added a little question box to my instagram earlier this afternoon and i'm just basically going to be answering a few of your questions whilst i do my nails and get them wedding ready so um i do apologize i am sweating profusely in this shed right now it is so hot it is like the first day of an actual summer that the uk has seen um and yeah it's really warm today and i have got a fan in here but i can't have it on because it's going to be too loud so yeah um, it's hot i'm very sorry if you see me sweating then that's why but yeah got my little stanley to get me through if you haven't got a stanley even if it's a dupe oh my gosh you need to invest because this is just the best thing ever especially as a nail tech because you can fill this up it is literally bigger than my head and yeah it'll last you like most of the day if you fill this up with loads of ice it will stay icy and you can don't have to worry about running in if you don't get any breaks to go and get a fresh drink so this gets me through the day trust me i have your questions here in front of me and I will be doing my nails. Basically what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing just like a nude base with a sage green tip, I think. Um, because that's what colour my dress is. Um, I'm a bridesmaid, which is so exciting. And yeah, our dresses are sage. So I thought that I would do a bit of a sage French tip, which I'm super excited about. But yeah, I've taken my length down a little bit. I absolutely love almond nails, like, and I like them a bit longer, but they were getting a bit, out of hand if i kept the length like they were at a perfect length but if i kept the length then by the time they grew out they were just going to be like revolting so yeah we took the length down a little bit which makes me sad because i do like my almond a bit longer but you know it's fine they'll grow again and then they'll be at the um like the best shape uh, the best kind of length again so they are like a bit on the shorter side for me right now but you know it's fine they just needed tidying up because you know like almond nails like they look amazing and then you look at them from like the underneath and you like ew so yeah that's basically the poa of today's video i've got your questions here and i will crack on basically what base we're going to be changing to today is this one so this is shade ruthless by um Chris bells this is the hema free one which is basically the color match to cookie cream and cookie cream is just my absolute godsend i actually love that shade so so much so this is the color match one and we're basically going to be using this one because who doesn't love hema free um so that's the base i'm going to be using and then i will show you what um sage color i'm using um when i get to that point but i will crack on with my prep and i will get into the video and start answering your questions so the first question is starting out is by abbott's hard as it looks to apply now build a gel obviously it's a little bit more difficult for me because to answer this question because 
I am like three years into my journey now and Builder Gel is most like most of the thing that I use. It's what I do day in, day out. So to me now, it is just like, I could do it with my eyes closed at this point. But I think what it is with Biab is you have to have it at the right consistency. So for example, right now it is really hot um, where I am. Well, I say it's really hot. It might not be really hot for those of you that live, you know, on the other side of the world and are used to this hot weather. But for us in the UK, this is hot. I'd say, what temperature is it? Let me look. Um, it's 24 degrees. <laughs> Which you guys will like that don't live around here and probably live in like really hot countries are laughing at us right now. But yeah, that's pretty warm for us. Um, and build a gel in that temperature is not cute. Build a gel when it's warm goes super, super runny. And that is just not the consistency that you're gonna be wanting when you're doing nails. It makes it super runny and it makes it really hard to apply. So basically what I'm gonna be doing, which I will show you, I haven't done it yet, um, but I will be putting my Builder Gel into a little pot of um, cold like iced water because this will get it at the consistency that I want it to be, which is like kind of thicker. Um, now I have like a little pot I literally just have like this little pot here that I put iced water in and then just sit my builder gel in it, which I do need to do because I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be like at that stage pretty soon. So yeah, I literally just sit my builder gel in that pot of iced water and keep it topped up through the day. So as each client comes in, I'll top it up and make sure it's iced, like iced, like the ice is not melted because that'll keep your builder gel at its best consistency um especially in weather like this because it makes it super runny when it's hot and popping it in here will keep it thick and easier to kind of apply and build it up yeah that will make a huge difference here's one i prepared earlier jokes just went and got it so yeah literally just a pot of iced water and then what i will do is i'll just sit my builder gel in it to make it a better consistency so it's just like popping out the top so it's not like over the seal but it's just sitting in there because then that will yeah make it thicker and it'll be super easy to apply with builder gel as well it is you're always better working with like too little the rather than too much because if you are just starting out and obviously it, it is harder to apply especially when you're not used to it then you're going to be better working with like smaller amounts so especially if you're working on short nails as well but I think practice makes perfect with it. I think if you're going to do, um, if you're just learning it, then I would practice on yourself a lot because you've got to get to know the consistency. You're going to get to work with it a little bit easier and it's just going to end up like second nature to you just applying it. Um, but yeah, it's, it is pretty easy, I find. But obviously it's easy for me to say because I've done it for quite a while now. But, and actually, I feel like it is kind of easier as well because... By the way, please excuse because I'm doing my non-dominant hand and this is just like a disaster waiting to happen. I have actually asked, like had people ask me to do videos on this of showing me, showing people how I do my non-dominant hand and with great difficulty that is how I do my non-dominant hand. Um, but yeah, so with Builder Gel, obviously it's it's just a journey. Like like with anything, practice makes perfect and you just have to kind of just go with it. Um, you just need to make sure that obviously you are practicing like plenty, practicing on yourself, practicing on family and you will get used to it really, really easily. I, I was about to say before that um, I actually find it easier because like with acrylic, you don't really have much like time to play around with it. I feel like when you set acrylic, like literally within a few minutes, like it's set and that's it. But with Builder Gel, obviously you have got, you've got all the time until that goes in the lamp, then you are absolutely fine to play around with it and get it into the exact position that you want it in basically. Guess whose camera battery died? Mine. So that's a good start. Um, I've just charged it, but I actually did this hand whilst I was charging my battery. Um, so you guys missed one hand, but I saved this hand for you so that we can do this one together. I've just applied Ruthless, which is this beaut shade. I've gotten, I've done no refining or anything. I've literally just applied it. Um, but I'm going to be um, going in with my trio of 
dehydrator primer and base coat for this hand because i'm going to start this one now and um, whilst i carry on answering your questions let me just get them up right so the next one we're going to answer is advice on behind the scenes of running a business tax financing etc so funny story about this i did a full video filmed it edited it and i literally just had to do last minute bits to it on the whole like how i do my finances how i log all of my like appointments and I accidentally deleted it so that's fun that was amazing that was a time to be alive yeah I was so mad like so mad but I really need to re refilm it but basically what I will do is I will give you a bit of a lowdown of basically what I do now advice on running a business advice on now advice on behind the scenes of running a business behind the scenes of running a business do you want the truth um you don't stop you absolutely do not stop when i used to work a nine to five five o'clock comes you finish work you forget about everything that goes on and when you are self-employed and you're running your own business you literally never stop and when i say that clients is like the the kind of bare face thing that people see and there is so much that goes on behind the scenes it is actually mental so everything that you know comes with running a business especially when you're being self-employed you're doing it all yourself you have to think about absolutely everything and i just feel like i didn't quite understand how much it was just going to take over my life and i absolutely love it like i really really do i wouldn't have it any other way and i am a big believer in you get out what you put in and i work so hard and not just because it's not just nails i do obviously i have no boo i do youtube i'd like to like create content for my instagram for nails so clients is just like probably 40 percent of what i do maybe even 30 um and yeah everything i have to try and do in the spare time for me doing that obviously i do nails now tuesday to saturday monday is solidly for nobu but i have to find time during the week to do nobu as well to you know head to the warehouse pack orders send them off do content it's um it's a lot but do you know what i'm like do you know what's really weird is like i just always want to be doing that like when i'm kind of like for example friday night came i had a manic week last week it was absolutely mental but friday night came and i i think it was about seven o'clock that i finished and then i went inside i grabbed my tea and it got to about 20 to 8 and i thought what shall i do and i was like shall i go and do my nails <laughs> and i'm like georgina that's all you've done all week like and it's weird because yeah i'm just like oh i'll go and do my nails and it's just really bizarre because you'd think that i'd like be fed up of it by then but i'm actually not like for example like today's a sunday today's my day off not doing clients what am i doing i'm sat here doing my nails so i feel like it's just one of those things like it's just like my life and i put a lot of hard work into it but again i believe you get out what you put in and i yeah i work super hard and when you're self-employed you, it is hard to like kind of find the balance obviously like if you have kids and you're doing it you kind of have to find the balance and um, obviously if you're doing it part-time then it is something that you have to try and split your concentration on but yeah this is all i do so running a business is hard but when you love it and like in the like most cliche way as possible like it feel it doesn't feel like you're working now obviously i do run myself into the ground a little bit sometimes and take on a bit too much but i i just really enjoy it like i think that's the only time when i think oh my god like what am i doing is when i take too much on and i just end up stressing out um and that's when it gets a bit much but i feel like i do need to get a little bit better at managing my time and 
having to having like a bit of a balance a bit more of a balance so yeah it's hard work but it's so worth it because you're doing it for yourself i'm kind of going off on a tangent here with regards to tax and financing so the tax side of everything was one thing that i was super super anxious about when i first started um when i knew i wanted to go self-employed and the truth is i ended up getting an accountant to help me and that was the best thing i ever did i've like obviously done like my tax returns and stuff now and it's not even that bad like it, it's really not like as long as you maintain it throughout the year now i did mention in my last in the video that i did film and then lost i did mention how i kind of keep my like how i keep track of everything and basically what i do is i have my diary and what i do is obviously that has the date date the time and the name of the person booked i'll write next to it what they're booked in for and then all i need to do after that is write the amount that their appointment was and how they paid which was either i accept either cash or bank transfer so that's essentially what i do and then what i have to do is i then move that over into like a spreadsheet which is month by month so what i'll do is i'll section off like the months and then write like transfer all of that information from my diary over to my spreadsheet so that's my accountant and then essentially all of the rest of the stuff that i do is just keeping log of all of my um, invoices and stuff but that's pretty easy to do because everything which i'm probably not alone on this everything that i usually buy is online so what i do when i need to print out my invoices because i must admit i'm not the best at printing out my invoices as and when i buy things but what I do is I basically think about the main accounts of where I spend. So I know that I like buy things from Alan Howard, Glitter Bells, um, Salons Direct, um, like Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll just list those and go into each one and just make note of obviously all of the purchases. It's dead easy. Like for example, on Glitter Bells, you can just go on your orders, go on. Um, and then it'll yeah go on your orders and then it'll come up with each of your orders it'll show like what months it is um all that kind of stuff and it's dead easy to do because you can just go on and um most of it's online i do buy some stuff in store um for example alan howard sometimes if i have run out of something and say for example glitter bells haven't got it in stock then i'll run to alan howard but you just need to keep track of your receipts um and then with regards to um everything else like i say most of it's online so it's pretty easy to do and then once you've got all of your invoices then your spreadsheet you can literally just give that to your accountant and they can sort out the rest i personally didn't feel comfortable doing a tax return on my own because i just didn't want to do it wrong and um, i was just so scared of doing it wrong and getting in trouble so yeah i paid an account to do it, it wasn't even that expensive so if it's something that you're not 100 percent comfortable in doing even if you just do an you know use an accountant for like the first time just so that then you can see how they do it and you can get a little bit of like advice and stuff and then you can either if you felt comfortable doing it the next time on your own then you can do but i personally won't do that i'll just go back to my accountant and ask her for some help because it was definitely the easiest option especially because it's just like i don't want to be getting in trouble like i don't want that because i would never purposely do something wrong like not do something but it's knowing that you've done it like you might not know that you have to do it do you know do you know what i mean so yeah that was the main thing um but i ended up just getting help with it and it was it was fairly easy it, it's just it's just one of the things that you just got to maintain throughout the year and then when it comes to doing your tax return and things like that it it's pretty easy it, it's if you don't kind of maintain it throughout the year then it makes it harder for yourself when you do the return um but yeah anything that i was anxious about that was the main thing that i was worried about when being self-employed and it yeah it wasn't even that scary it was fine i think it's just the unknown most of the time so my next question is when did you know it's the right time to go self-employed and i get quite a few um obviously you guys message me on instagram a lot for like advice and stuff like that which is always welcome and basically i get this question so much is that people will be you know a few months or years into the nail journey and wanting to go self-employed and are just worried about making that jump now i was super scared about going self-employed um obviously when i did my qualification it was in covid which is just makes things 10 times harder but the kind of saving grace that i had was that i was at home i was living at home 
and I didn't have a mortgage to pay. So that was the main thing. I'd done nails part-time um, for a whole year before I went self-employed. And basically what I did was I made sure that what I was earning part-time was enough to cover my bills and my outgoings. And then I just thought, well, I'm just gonna have to see how it goes. Um, anything that I earn on top of that, obviously because I'll have more time, is now just a bonus. But I was in a pretty fortunate position because I didn't really have, like I did have outgoings, but not like to like for a mortgage, for example. So I just thought to myself, if I don't do this now, like when else, when else is gonna be the best time? Um, so yeah, I just went for it. But I think as long as you know that you've got a basic kind of income when you are part-time, then anything that you earn on top of that is gonna be a bonus where I know obviously it's it will be harder if you kind of qualify and then just quit your job and go self like self-employed that I probably wouldn't recommend because you just don't know how it's going to go some people really struggle to get clients obviously it's a difficult time where people might not have like as much disposable income so I think it's best to just slowly build it up um, and just be sure that you've got a basic in income with doing it part-time and then when you go full-time anything else you get is going to be a bonus basically the next question that we have is advice on getting clients so the this kind of i actually have done a whole video on this and i will link it in the top corner um, if you want to go and have a look at that but i will basically answer your question in like a bit of a shorter version um, now I get loads of people asking me about how to gain clients obviously it is super difficult because it all depends on kind of your area the competition in your area um, obviously I have always said posting on social media is 100% the best way to start because you need to be there for, pe for people to see social media is so big and it's free advertising I literally have a facebook page and an instagram page and i get clients from both of those i literally just link my my instagram to my facebook so when i post on instagram it goes straight to my facebook so i hardly even need to do anything with that but yeah you need to be seen on social media even if you are starting out i literally started by posting sets that i wasn't even majorly proud of but um at the time like when you're a beginner you need to be transparent with people and I am I'm, I've kind of got different opinions on um, obviously like introductory offers and stuff now I would always say do intro introductory offers for clients just to kind of get people in offer like model sets you know at a discounted price and things like that but what I would say is don't be too cheap because you will end up just gaining clients because you're cheap and they are not necessarily the clients that you want to be attracting I would say um, obviously try and practice as much as you can on yourself and family and friends mainly to build your uh, your portfolio and your social media just so you can get pictures even if you just said to somebody can i do your nails just so i can get some pictures or if you know if they they didn't mind just covering the cost of products just so that you're not kind of selling yourself short um and yeah it's it's a bit difficult with introductory introductory offers because you don't want to be attracting the wrong kind of clients but i would say that that is a major kind of plus for just getting people in because um i've seen loads of people you know do introductory offers and it definitely does work and it's definitely worth giving it a go i did it and i basically how i did it was had like a price list of what my price list would be if I were if I was like fully experienced and then what I did is I basically popped I think it was like 50% off when I first started and explained that it was because I was a beginner and then as I got more experienced the discount kind of like got less and then just so that people were going to be aware of what my full price my like my price list would be when I'm fully experienced um then they kind of know if that makes sense um rather than just kind of saying yeah i'll do you a full set of acrylics for like 10 15 pound because again you'll just end up attracting the wrong people um but yeah just make sure you are super active on social media because that is where everyone is now and just make sure your pictures are eye-catching and 
yeah that's basically how i did it and i get quite a few clients now from instagram or facebook and a lot from word of mouth as well now but obviously that's because i built my clientele up and then obviously word of mouth then kicks in um but yeah to start off with social media will be your best friend it's free advertising you're in complete control of it and that is the best way to achieve them post on your local facebook groups and post on instagram with your location on there um which yeah will be the best place to start so that is my application all done i just need to do some refining of the shape but with the application i'm pretty happy with it just checking it on the side profile um but yeah just going to refine the edges and then we will be good to go with the frenchies so this is going to be the last question that I'm going to do just because I'm aware of the time. I don't want this video to go on too long. Um, but yeah, the last one is how to deal with competition. I'm a beginner. I'm finding it hard seeing all of the nail accounts. So basically it is, it's hard for me to give advice on this because I was exactly the same and it's super hard to kind of come into a new industry follow like different beauty accounts and nail accounts and try and not compare yourself because comparing it is was the worst thing that I did when I first started out now obviously the comparing situation is going to come with time obviously as you find your feet in the industry it's super difficult though when you kind of follow accounts for inspo and then just kind of end up looking at their accounts and just thinking why am I not this good and it's just super difficult and i completely understand where you're coming from because i was exactly the same now i've mentioned this before but with nails obviously there's so many different niches and i think what's most important is to find yours and find what you enjoy doing now obviously there's so many nail accounts that i follow and some do crazy nail art some do crazy lengths some people like just do short and simple kind of nails and I think the main thing that you need to focus on is what your kind of niche is because without that you're just going to end up doing nails that you one don't enjoy one aren't necessarily good at because I'm not good at like crazy nail like nail art and stuff and it's just going to stress you out that you aren't as good as other people that you see because you might not naturally have that talent now I know that I don't have that talent of being able to draw whatever I want on a nail and I think that is the main thing that kind of annoyed me when I first started because when I first started doing nails, I am um, going to start my Frenchies by the way and I'm going to be going for this sage which is Crest Sage by the Gel Bottle. So I'm just going to do these with my Nobu Fine Liner and I'm just going to go for pretty thin ones I think. Um, my battery's flashing again, how amazing. So I'll finish this question and then I will... Um, I will head off but yeah essentially um what I would do is you need to find your niche because when I first started I look back at the kind of nails that I was doing and I absolutely despise them they're just not my vibe at all they were super long acrylics and I get that people obviously go through different phases of what they like but it just wasn't my cup of tea like I love like pretty short biops now and you probably will change your opinion as you kind of find your feet with it um but yeah it is mainly like about finding your niche and just kind of focusing on your own progression like just take pictures of everything you will see your progress and you will be so so pleased with it when you look at your own progress and see how far you've come um, but yeah, I know it's easy to look at people and wonder why you're not kind of where they are yet. But comparing your day one is not the same as comparing somebody's like somebody's journey that is, you know, for example, mine, which is like three years into it. Um, and that is exactly what I did when I first started. And it is super easily said than done. But it's just one thing that you need to remember that you are a beginner and everyone has to start somewhere um my beginner nails were probably horrend horrendous um well there's no probably about it they definitely were but yeah you will get there and that's the one thing you've got to focus on you will definitely get there so yes my battery is flashing and i'm aware that this video is probably getting a bit long now um so i will finish it here and i will make sure that i pop a little video in or a picture of my finished nails 
when I finally get them finished. I won't be too far off now, but my battery is going to die. So thank you so, so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Um, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.